أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد إن شاء الله we will we will continue إن شاء الله today with سورة الحج حج من pilgrimage and last time we stopped at ayah 37 so we will start today with ayah 38 and in this ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Inna Allah yudafi on al-ladina amin, inna Allah la yuhbu kull khawanin kafur." Inna Allah yudafi. Allah defends al-ladina amin, those who believes in Allah. So, if if any one try to harm the Muslims, know that Allah is the one who is going to defend them. Whether you know, he sometimes he wants to take among them martyrs. He wants to test them, he wants to try them. But when they prove themselves and they establish the religion of Allah Azzawajal, as we will see now in the next ayat, know that Allah Azzawajal is the one who will defend them and He's the one who's going to provide them victory. Inna Allah la yuhubbu kulla khawanin kafur. Verily, Allah do not loves everyone who is khawan, who is a betrayal, and kafur, and a disbeliever in Allah Azzawajal. So this ayah, some narration said that this ayah was revealed while the Prophet ﷺ was still in Mecca and the Sahaba and at that time the Kuffar were actually harming the believers they were torturing them, they were you know making, you know giving them trouble and, 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 and whipping them and hurting them and specifically after uh, uh, what the Kuffar has done with the first martyr of Islam which was the a woman, in, a, a believing woman who is the mother of Ammar Right and Bani Yasir, uh, the uh, uh, Al Yasir, she's the wife of Yasir, and then the and then the Prophet ﷺ told them she was killed, and her husband was killed, and and they 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 left their son, you know, to witness this, and then the Prophet ﷺ said that you know صبر على ياسر إن موعدكم الجنة be patient O family of Yasir your abode is Jannah is is paradise, so. Here the Muslims are still at the very early stages of Islam. They've been tortured, they've been harmed. Allah Azza wa has not given them yet the permission to defend themselves. So he revealed this ayah, he says, Allah will defend you. Just be patient. And subhanAllah, and, it, and this is the sunnah of Allah Azza wa You see today, a lot of things happening to the Muslims. And Allah eventually will defend them. And Allah Azza wa is the one who's going to bring them victory. And then the next ayah was revealed when the Prophet ﷺ has done already hijrah, we migrated to Medina. And when they migrated to Medina, they, you know, they established this institution of a state, right? And then he was there with the believers. And at one point, the kuffar, the pagans in Mecca, wanted to harm the Prophet ﷺ. So what did they do? They went and they started taking their belongings for the people, because when the people left Mecca, they left everything behind, their homes, their belongings. Some of them left with nothing because they ran away and they escaped to Medina. And then when they got to Medina, Allah Azza wa Jal provided them, provided them with sustenance, with risk and everything. But in addition to this, the pagan of Mecca were very upset about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now he's gaining popularity. So they went and they took all their belongings and then they, they you know, they, they, they took them and then they they used them to themselves, they took them for trades, they do, did use them for their own worldly benefits. So the Prophet ﷺ was informed that uh, Abu Sufyan, he was one of the leaders of Mecca, was taking those belongings and other, you know, uh, um, other material things or other, other trade or other merchandise, and he's going toward Damascus, toward Cham, to do trade with it and bring back food and other things. So they take those things. So then the Prophet uh, the, the, the the believers, they were like, you know, Al-Harb, Al-Harb, O Messenger of Allah, we need to go fight, we need to fight them, we need to go and we need to avenge what they have done to us in Mecca. So the Prophet, at that point, he was pushing back. No, we're not going to fight. Allah Azza wa Jal has not given us the permission to fight. And subhanAllah, you will see that every fight in Islam has always been, in a way, um, a, you know, a self-defense. So here, 
Allah Azza wa Jal revealed that ayah at that time and he says uh, uh, Allah has given a permission to those who have been fought those who have been oppressed those who have been hurt and harmed that they, uh, they are indeed being wronged and verily Allah is well capable of bringing them and providing them victory so when this ayah was revealed right away the believers they realized that Allah has given them the permission to go and fight for their right and fight for what's right for them at that point the Prophet did not make it a must for every believers to go and fight with him because they were only going to intercept a civilian uh, caravan and to go and get take back their possessions so they're not going there to do an all-up war so he took 314 men strong to go and intercept, intercept that caravan but subhanallah Allah Azza wa has a different plan for them subhanallah and that you know then the rest of the story the battle of Badr when they got there that caravan was supposed to stop by the wells of Badr when they informed Abu Sufyan that he's coming there they said come and meet us at the battle of Badr and the Kafar has planned 1200 for 1300 strong army with horses and camels and everything to intercept those 300 people thinking that they're gonna you know defeat them and Allah so he brought victory to the 300 and they were able to defeat the Kafar so Allah so he continues says Allah has given victory has given permission to those who are have been oppressed and harmed and they've been fought that Allah is the one who's going to give them victory then Allah Azza wa Jal continues says, who are those people whom Allah, like sometimes you're harmed, you're oppressed, Allah will always help the, the one who is oppressed. But here Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, you know, some additional requirements. He says, Those who are, have been kicked out and been taken away from their homes with no right. You know, they become, you know, they've been oppressed, they've been harmed. They, be, they became refugees, they became homeless, they've been taken out of their homes without any, any, any reason. Except for the one reason that they say that our Lord is Allah Azza wa Jal. Because they're mu'min, because they're believers, because they're Muslims, and they say, La ilaha illallah, the kuffar wanted to fight them and harm them and, and hurt them. So they kicked them out of their land and these people have been taken away without any justice. And then here Allah is justifying war in his cause. So there are two reasons why we do fighting in Islam. Two, only two allowed reasons. There's no other reason. One of them is to defend the faith. Like you're not defending your pride. You're defending the faith. And the other one is defending your, yourself in self-defense, defending your land, defending your people. Now, if someone comes and offend you and oppress you and try to take your land and try to harm you, you have every right to stand up and defend. And the other one is when the religion itself is under war and under attack, you have the right to do this, to, to, to fight the kuffars. And we can give you examples, inshallah, on this if you guys have questions later, inshallah. And here Allah is saying, if it wasn't that Allah has given permission for mankind to repel each other, you know, to, to allow people to stand up for justice, so many bi'a, bi'a used to be those big, you know, they looked like minarets made out of iron that some of the Ruhban, some of the priests of the Christianity used to use and then they use them for worship. Wabiya wa salawat and a prayer houses and those prayer houses were specific uh, like, like, like uh, what we call uh, temples for the Jews. Sawami, sorry, Sawami are those big tall things. Wabiya are places of worships for the Christians. Wa salawat are places, places of worship for the Jews wa masajid and masajid as we know which is the masajids of the Muslimin yudhkaru fiha sumullahi kathira if it wasn't for Allah allowing the believers and mankind to, to repel 
each other, so good to repel evil, so many masajids, so many churches, so many temples, so many places of worship to Allah Azza wa Jal, a true places of worship to Allah Azza wa Jal would have been destroyed. Uh, and those places of worship, Allah's name is recited and remembered in it a lot. So Allah Azza wa Jal does not want those places to be harmed either. So if it wasn't for this, uh, you know, so many, you know, like the, the evil always will prevail and the evil will destroy the, the, the masajid and there will no longer be religion on the face of the planet. And then Allah Azza wa Jal continues, he says, Allah may And this is a promise from Allah Azza wa Jal, that Allah will give victory to those who want to uphold the victory, uphold the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal. So in other, in other words, if you want to be victorious, if you want to be successful and, and win, you have to do your, your effort in the name of Allah Azza wa Jal. So if you try to bring victory to Allah, Allah will bring the victory to you. If you sit and stay at home and you're lazy and you don't do anything, the victory is not going to come to you on its own. And masajid will be destroyed. And churches will be destroyed. And temples will be destroyed. And you'll be staying at home and watching TV. You know, when is the victory of Allah is going to come? Allah says, it's not going to come until you go to it. SubhanAllah. وَلَيَنْصُرَنَّ مَنْ يَنْصُرُ And إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَقَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ Verily, Allah is very... Uh, is, is, is severe in his strength and he's very and he's the almighty subhanallah and and then allah gives us a, a special special quality of those people that allah will bring them victory so if you want to bring victory to allah allah will bring the victory to you but under one condition which is the next ayah those when we have given them the ability to be strong and rule the land afterwards, they will have to do those specific qualities. They have to do those specific actions, which are aqamu salah, they establish salah. So the reason why you're fighting is to defend your religion and to defend your ability to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and to defend your ability to establish masajid and to defend your ability to uphold the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal. Zakat, and they have given charity. So Allah, Allah wants to give you uh, per, permission, permission to become victorious, but you have to promise that you're fighting for His cause, to establish the salawat, the, the, the prayers, and to give zakat, and to give for the poor and the charity. And they command the people to do good, and they prevented them from doing bad. And the end, the, the final, uh, uh, the end result is to Allah Azza wa Jal. So subhanAllah, you see today so many wars and so many things and why the Muslims are not victorious? Because everybody is fighting for their own desire, for their own party, for their own this, for their own that. And then everybody thinks their religion is based on their own desire and everybody wants to do this and wants to do that. And nobody truly is fighting for the true cause of establishing the, the, the intention that I, you know, like I want to fight and I wanna, because I want to put this guy as a president, I want to put this guy as a president, or I want these people to be on the seat. I mean, I see this in Lebanon all the time. You know, in Lebanon, subhanAllah, it's just like the whole country, the whole people are ready to slaughter each other because, you know, we want this man or we want that man, and, and all of them are. You're bound to have fire if they die today the, the, on the state they are, subhanAllah. You know, and, and, and that's our state of the affair in the Muslim world, subhanAllah. And here Allah Azza wa Jal is entertaining the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he's, he's, he's given him kind of glad tidings and saying, you know, do you, don't, don't let this harm you, don't let this bother you. Because if they disbelieve you today, and they're fighting you, and they're harming you, know that they have done this before. The people of Nuh, Noah, they have disbelieved. And the people of Ad, they have disbelieved. And the people of Thamud, they have disbelieved. And the people of Prophet Ibrahim, السلام, they have disbelieved. And the people of Prophet Lut, السلام, they have disbelieved. And then the people, the companion of the city of Madian, the people of Shu'ayb, they have disbelieved. وَكُذِّبَ مُوسَىٰ And even Musa himself, he was, the people disbelieved in him. 
Then Allah Azza has given heed to those who disbelieve. He made them successful. Like look at Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Musa came to him with many, many, many miracles. And the children of Israel was, were harmed even during the time of Musa when he was with them. Before he left they were harmed. Then Allah Azza raised him in the house of Pharaoh until he was 20, 24 years old. Then Allah sent him to Madian for 10 years. That's 34 years. Then he came back from Madian. 34, 35, 37 years after. Now even, you know, and the children of Israel being harmed. And then um, Musa came with miracle after miracle and Pharaoh refused and Allah gave him heed. Gave him heed and they thought they were, they were invincible, the people of Pharaoh. Then after Allah said, And then I took them. And when Allah takes people, in the We saw this ayah in Surah Hud in the past. When Allah takes people, He takes them with severeness, with pain, and with might. Subhanallah. So here Allah says, uh, 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 then, then Allah takes them and Allah punished them. How was the plotting and the, 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 the revenge, Allah avenging the Muslims at that time for all these people that passed before? Then Allah continues and gives the Prophet examples of nations and he says, Go look around the earth. And he says, how many nations, how, you know, the example of other, of many towns that used to be wrongdoers, evil people. Allah destroyed them, وَهِيَ because of the wrongdoing that they've done. فَهِيَ خَاوِيَ Look at it today. Look at the ruins of so many. We can see this today in our own eyes. You know, we see those towns all across the globe. Things, towns that were digging from under the ground. And Allah Azza wa destroyed them. فَهِيَ خَاوِيَ there's nothing in them. All the people are gone. Ala Urushia. And you see all of its beauty, all of its home are still standing sometimes. But then the people are gone, have been destroyed. Wa And they used to have wells where they get water from. And now you look at the well, it's completely dried, it's completely destroyed. Allah destroyed all of their, 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 their reasons for life. Wa qasrin mashid. And how many... Qasr, uh, how many uh, um, uh, castles that are established and high, and you, lie, you look at them today, they're just stones sitting there, and Allah has destroyed those people. Can they walk and roam the, the, the land and, and have hearts that they can comprehend and understand with it? Or don't, can, don't they have ears that they can hear? Go here and listen this about the stories of those before you. Not only listen to the Quran, go listen in you know the stories of the people of the book before you, the stories in the in the Torah, the story in the Old Testament. Can they have ears that they can hear with it? But then Allah says, Indeed, blindness is not in the eyes. But indeed blindness is when the hearts inside your chest became blind and they can't see. So sometimes you have an eye and you're looking and you can see, but you're truly not comprehending and not seeing because your heart are so harsh. You don't understand what's going on around you. And then here the people, uh, the pagans are hasten, you know, are asking Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, when is the punishment? You promise in us that Allah is going to punish us? Bring us the punishment, show us. And Allah says He will never, never, you know, uh, uh, if He makes a promise, He will never betray His promise. So Allah is going to fulfill His promise. And know that a day with Allah is like a thousand years from, from what you count. So Allah can, can, can give you a thousand year heed, can give you a hundred year heed, can give you ten years, twenty. 10,000 years heed. But then Allah Azza wa when He decides He's going to go and bring victory, He will bring victory. And here Allah Azza wa repeats the ayah slightly with some changes. He says, and how many nations 
Allah has given them in terms of sustenance and, and Allah has given them heat and given them power and everything they need while they were wrongdoers. Then Allah took them and destroyed them المصير, and to that, know that to, our, to Allah everything is going to, all the end result is with Allah Say, O oh mankind, so here Allah said in the Prophet وسلم, tell the world that I am nothing to you except a, a clear evident warner. I am warning you. So obey me. Listen to me because Allah can destroy you. SubhanAllah. Those who believed and did righteous deeds, Allah says He's promising them that they have a forgiveness from Him. And Allah is going to give them a great rizq. A rizq, a sustenance, kareem that is very generous. And this ayah, <coughs> um, uh, 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 the Imam said that the, he, no, no, the other ayah is coming later. And then, uh, so Allah Azza wa is saying that He will provide for those who, this, who believed in Allah Azza wa Jal, and He's the one who's going to give them sustenance, and He's the most generous. وَالَّذِينَ سَعُوا فِي آيَاتِنَا مَعَاجِزِينَ أُولَيَكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَحِيمِ And those who, who went against Allah Azza wa Jal and then went against them the proof and the miracles and the, the evidence from Allah Azza wa Jal and, and, and Allah Azza wa Jal says these are the companion of hellfire وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ وَلَا نَبِيٍ إِلَّا إِذَا تَمَنَّا أَلْقَى الشَّيْطَانُ فِي أُمْنِيَتِهِ فَيَنْسَخُ اللَّهُ مَا يُلْقِي الشَّيْطَانُ ثُمَّ يُحْكِمُ اللَّهُ آيَاتِهِ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ So let me go uh, do literal translation of this ayah and then I'm going to spend some time explaining this ayah because it's, it's kind of uh, tricky to, to understand. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ Allah says there is no messenger that we have sent before you وَلَا نَبِي nor a prophet إِلَّا إِذَا تَمَنَّا uh, uh, in, uh, except that when he tamanna means uh, he, he wishes something alqa shaytan fi umniyati the shaytan will throw something in his uh, 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 in, in his desire what he wants what he's seeking fayansakhu allahu ma yulqi shaytan then allah azza wa jal will go and erase what the shaytan has revealed to this messenger thumma yuhkimu allahu ayatihi but then allah will make his signs very clear and evident and the ayat and the miracle of Allah Azza wa Jal very clear and evident Wallahu alim al hakim indeed Allah is the most knowledgeable and he is the most wise so here what Allah Azza wa Jal is saying see the Prophet, I mean the, um, the Kuffar of Mecca they, they used to say about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you know you have miracles then show us miracles then do this and you know you know, they they're coming to him and they're challenging him, and Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying he is nothing that but a, but a human, and whatever he tells you is a revelation to you from Allah Azza wa Jalla. And sometimes, the uh, uh, you know the, the prophets, you know, sometimes they make du'a to Allah Azza wa Jalla. For example, they want something, they want Allah to bring them victory, so the shaitan will try to come and deceive them. And give them something and say this is a revelation from Allah Azza wa Jal. And as soon as the shaitan, the shaitan wants to come and deceive even the messenger. But Allah Azza wa Jal has protected the messenger. He says, and every time the shaitan comes to them to try to deceive them, to reveal to them something. And saying this is from Allah. Then Allah Azza wa Jal will completely destroy that. And, and Allah will make it clear and evident. And he will clarify and, and, and clear his revelation and then <coughs> destroy and erase what the shaitan has revealed to them. Wallahu uh, alim al-hakim, Allah is the most knowledgeable and the most wise. So sometimes the messenger, you know, is, you know, hears something and they think this is from Allah Azza wa Jal and it's the work of the shaitan but Allah immediately clears it, clears it and cleanses it. And here Allah has proven that the messenger is nothing but a human. And whatever Allah revealed to him is Allah the one who's guiding him. Even though the shaitan is trying very, very hard to try to deceive us. And this is not just for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The shaitan tried it on all the messengers. But Allah has protected the messengers and has cl cleansed their message. So we can come, we can receive inshallah a very pure 
and, and, and a complete message from Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? لِيَجْعَلَ مَا يُلْقِ الشَّيْطَانُ فِتْنَةَ الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِ مَرَضِ And Allah Azza wa Jal sometimes will allow the shaitan to go through this. You know, maybe Allah does not immediately erase what the shaitan sends, but he makes, he, he, he let the messenger maybe say that word. Why? To test those who are hypocrites. الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ So those who have diseased hearts, to make it as a fitna, as a test to them, to see do they truly believe or not. وَالْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ And those whom hearts are very very harsh and hard. وَإِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ نَفِي شِقَاقٍ بَعِيدٍ And verily the wrongdoers are, 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 are in, in shiqaq, mean they're, they're divided in many many different far away divisions. Each one of them wants their way and the shaitan is trying to please their way and when those words come then Allah Azza wa Jal, when they first hear it they're like so pleased but then Allah sends down the revelation, Allah cleanses those revelation and make sure that only the revelation that are coming from Allah Azza wa Jal will remain and everything else will be erased, subhanAllah, even from the hearts of the people except for those hypocrites that Allah is trying to test, subhanAllah. وَلِيَعْلَمَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعَلْمِ And those who have been given knowledge so they will know and becomes very clear evident to them أَنَّهُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكَ That what is being revealed to you is the truth from your Lord. So now they know that truly all this revelation is from Allah Azza wa Jal and the bad revelation is coming from the shaitan and Allah is still able to cleanse that bad revelation. They know that you are a human being, you are nothing but a messenger. You're relating the message and you're healing the message and you're thinking this from Allah but Allah Azza wa Jal is making it clear and evident to you. فَيُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ Then they believe in it. فَتُخْبِتَ لَهُ قُلُوبُهُمْ And then their hearts become, you know, humble and then they will, they will have a fear of Allah Azza wa Jal and love to Allah Azza wa Jal. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَهَادِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And indeed Allah is the one that will guide those who believe toward the straight path. Subhanallah. وَلَا يَزَلْ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فِي مَرِيَةٍ مِّنْهُ حَتَّى تَأْتِيَهُمُ السَّاعَةُ بَغْتَةً أَوْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ عَذَابُ يَوْمٍ عَقِيمٍ And those who disbelieve, they will continue to remain in this state of doubt about what's been revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu until the hour comes to them, until basically they meet Allah Azza wa Jal. Baghta, which will come to them suddenly. You know, they die, they sleep, they wake up immediately, they don't, you know, it, it, now it's there in front of them. أَوْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ عَذَابُ يَوْمٍ عَقِيمٍ Or they get the punishment of a day that is عَقِيم. عَقِيم is normally used for the person who cannot have children. So عَقِيم is someone who, you know, can't have, can't have children. So there's no continuity for his uh, uh, progeny. So here Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, or they get the punishment of a day that will never end. There will no other day after it. They will get the punishment of that day and that day will last for eternal, eternity. SubhanAllah, how Allah chooses His words, SubhanAllah, that they will get the punishment of a day that will not have an, a second day after it. On that day, no. Al-mulku yawma idhi lillahi yahkumu baynahum. The kingdom on that day belongs to Allah alone. He's the one who's going to provide the hukum, the judgment between them. فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمْلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فِي جَنَّاتِ النَّعِينَ Those who believed and did righteous deeds, they will be in the gardens of bliss of Na'im. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِنَا فَأُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُّهِينَ And those who disbelieve in our sign, they will get punishment muheen, a very humiliating punishment from Allah Azza wa Jal. Then Allah Azza wa Jal, there was the believers, then, you know, there was an ayah that was revealed to, to the Prophet Sallallahu where those who die in the cause of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah says, don't think that these are dead, they are with Allah, they've been, they've been given sustenance, they're still alive, and Allah Azza wa Jal has forgiven them and rewarded them, and we know this is the state of the martyrs. But here Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, you know, they said, well, those who migrated and they didn't die and they didn't fight, you know, some of the believers were saying, Things like, you know, we, we're not going to get the good rewards or, you know, in Jannah like, like those who fought before us and, and give their life to, to, for the cause of Allah Azza wa Jal. 
So then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, No. وَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Those who migrated for the cause of Allah Azza wa Jalla. They left Mecca, went to Medina. Purely they left all their belongings, everything for the cause of Allah Azza wa Jalla. ثُمَّ قُتِلُوا أَوْ مَاتُوا Whether they were killed or they died on their own. فَلَيَرْزُقَنَّهُ اللَّهُ رِزْقًا حَسَنًا Allah is going to give them a very generous and good sustenance and risk on the day of Qiyamah in Jannah. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَهُ خَيْرُ الرَّازِقِينَ And know that Allah is the one who is the best in terms of providing risk and sustenance to anyone. لَيُدْخِلَنَّهُمْ مُدْخَلًا يَرْضَوْنَ He's going to take them into a place that they will be pleased with. Better, better than anything you could imagine here in this life. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَعَلِيمٌ حَلِيمٌ Know that Allah is well aware, well knowledgeable, and He is the most halim, most forbearing. SubhanAllah. ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ عَاقَبَ بِمِثْلِ مَا عُقِبَ بِهِ ثُمَّ بُغِيَ عَلَيْهِ لَيَنْصُرَنَّهُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَوَ الْعَفُوُ الْغَفُورِ That is because the one who is being, the one who punishes, punishes the same way he was punished. So if someone transgressed onto you and harmed you in one way, you went and you harmed them back in the same way to make them stop. See, subhanAllah, there's a sunnah behind this. Is if we say, you know, if someone slapped me on this cheek, I'm going to give them this, this second cheek. And this is the state of the affair of the believers. People will be slapping them around all day long like the state we're, at, we're in today. And we're completely weak and we're completely being bulldozed by whoever is around us. So here Allah Azza wa Jalla says, if someone tried to bulldoze you, someone tried to harm you, someone tried to hurt you, and if you fight back in the same way, so don't transgress, don't go more. But show them that you are strong and you're going to stop them. And if you look at the state of the United States of America here and the army in America, you know, they say the best, you know, the strongest, you know, the, they have a strong army. And if anybody mess around, they, they, they go and punish them very, very severely. Why? To bring peace to them, to bring tranquility to them. And that's the intent. And here Allah is just saying, that's the intent. You, I'm asking you to establish a state that where you're going to establish prayer. You're going to give zakat, you're going to give charity. So you're going to bring justice on land. And then you're going to ask people to do good, prevent them to, to, to do bad and bring peace on earth and when you do this you have to be strong and you have to defend that state of mind because Allah wants peace on, on, on earth because there are so many bad people and if you stop doing that you're going to be bulldozed by many people and Allah says those who are, have the we have the, the, the right to to punish those who are punish us in the same way and those who have transgressed on us لا ينصرنه الله. Allah is going to give them victory. إن الله العفو غفور. Allah is the most forgiving, and He is the most uh, uh, He 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 forgives people. ذلك بأن الله يوديج الليل في النهار. That is, Allah is the one who brings night after day and day after night. وأن الله سميع بصير. And Allah hears everything and sees everything and knows that Allah is watching over everything. ذلك بأن الله هو الحق. Know that Allah is the true. وَأَنَّمَا يَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِهِ هُوَ الْبَاطِلِ And whatever they call beside Allah is falsehood. وَأَنَّ اللَّهُ هُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْكَبِيرِ And know that Allah is the most high and He's the most great. And He's the most, you know, uh, subhanAllah. Now, all of this is showing that you as human being on earth, don't think you're great. Don't think you're high. Don't think you're mighty. Establish the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal. Establish justice on land. Establish salah. Establish righteousness and know that Allah is the most high and Allah is the one who's going to protect you, subhanAllah. Alam tala anna Allah anzala min as And then here Allah, after he tells us about his greatness, his might, his ability to defend humanity, those who establish righteousness on earth, then Allah Azza wa Jal is reminding us about some of the quality that no one else has the quality but Allah Azza wa Jal. He says, can't you see, alam tala anna Allah anzala min as ma'a that Allah Azza wa Jal has sent down from the heavens water فَتُصْبِحُ الْأَرْضُ مُخْتَرَّةً And then you will see the land, it becomes very green. You know, go look outside today, we're in the spring. It was dead, the land was like a month ago, was dead. All the trees, all the branches on the trees didn't have any leaves, didn't have nothing. And then now suddenly you see the life has come down, come back. 
and you see leaves. Can we do this on our own? It is the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. Inna Allah latifun khabir. Verily Allah is the most gentle, most generous. And he's the mo- he's, he knows everything. SubhanAllah. Lahu ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. To him belongs what in the heavens and what's on earth. Wa inna Allah lahu al ghaniyu al hamid. And verily Allah is the one who has no need. Al hamid. He is the, the, the most praiseworthy. You know, he's no need on any of this stuff. He's doing this for you. Alam tara anna Allah sakhara lakum ma fil ard. Can't you see that Allah Azza wa Jal has subjected for you everything on earth? Everything on earth is for us. And he tells us this in Surah Al-Baqarah, at the very beginning of the Quran, where Allah Azza wa Jal huwa alladhi khalaqa lakum ma fil ardi jami'ah. He has created for you everything that's on earth. All the insects, all the animals, all the vegetation, all this beauty, everything on earth is to provide us life, subhanAllah. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, can't you see that Allah Azza wa Jal has subjected for you everything, ma fil ard, everything on earth. وَالْفُلْكَ تَجْرِي فِي الْبَحْرِ بِأَمْرِهِ And then the ships are sailing in the sea with his command. وَيُمْسِكُ السَّمَاءَ أَنْ تَقَعَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ And he is the one who holds the heaven as a canopy, as a protection for us to fall down and collapse on the earth. Imagine if this ozone layer somehow, you know, broke and collapsed. What happens? We have no life. We will burn directly from the sun. SubhanAllah. Uh, except with his command and with his will. He's the one who's holding it. No, no technology today can do what Allah Azza wa Jal has, has put around this earth. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِالنَّاسِ لَرَعُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ Indeed, Allah he is the most ra'uf, most gentle, most merciful with mankind by creating all of this environment around us. وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَحْيَاكُمْ ثُمَّ يُمِيتُكُمْ He is the one who gave you life. He is the one who is going to take your life. ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ And he is the one who is going to bring you back to life. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَكَفُورُ Indeed, mankind is disbeliever. Reject faith. Reject the favors that Allah has given them. لِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ جَعَلْنَا مَنْ سَكَنْهُمْ نَاسِكُهُ Allah is saying to every nation, Allah has given them a sharia, a way of life, a way of worship, so they can follow it, so they can worship Allah Azza wa Jal. فَلَا يُنَازِعُنَّكَ فِي الْأَمْرِ Do not let them go and challenge you with the, with the different matters, with the issues. وَدْعُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ And call people to your Lord. That's your purpose. Your purpose, you're a warner, call people to Allah. They can answer, they don't have to answer. It's up to them. Know that you are indeed on a very straight path that is guided by Allah. So your religion as Islam is the religion of the straight path, the religion that is following the guidance from Allah. But if they argue with you, Tell them that Allah is well aware, knows better, knows more of the things that you do. Allah is the one who's going to judge between you on the day of Qiyamah with the things that you use to dispute. So we will stop here inshallah and we will continue. Actually, we're almost done with the surah. There's, uh, there's like seven, eight ayat. Can we continue for another five minutes? Inshallah. Alam ta'alam anna Allah ya'alam ma fis samawati wal ard. Can't you know that Allah Azza wa Jal knows everything that happens on earth, in the heavens and on earth? Inna thalika fi kitab. All of this is already been decreed or written in a book. Inna thalika ala Allah yaseer. Know that this is very easy unto, upon Allah Azza wa Jal. Um, I, this is going to take some time the last few ayats I want to spend enough time on them so let's stop today we'll continue next week inshallah and then we will conclude the surah next week and we'll start with the next surah after it surah al-mu'minun inshallah jazakallah khair subhana rabbika rabbil azzati amma yasifun wassalamun al-mursaleen walhamdulillah rabbil azzati amma yasifun